Are you looking for an adventure through Old Japan? Or at least a place that is incredibly similar to one? Monochrome Mobius may scratch that itch. Hey, welcome back to Shinky Plays, and today we are reviewing Monochrome Mobius. Initially localized for Steam on November 17th of 2022, finally got a release on PS4 and PS5 on September 5th, 2023. Huge thanks to NIS America for providing me with a copy of this game for review purposes. And as always, I'll try my best to avoid spoilers, but some may slip through the cracks, so keep that in mind. Anyways, strap yourselves in, grab a snack, and get ready to hear all about the meat and potatoes of Monochrome Mobius. Story is where Monochrome Mobius really shines. The story is cliché, but it is pulled off in a way that makes it seem really unique. Monochrome Mobius is a sequel to Utaware Ramono, Mask of Deception. I am probably messing up that pronunciation. Anyways, your adventure starts with you taking control of a young Mononofu named Ashtor who lives with his mother and younger sister. While out on an investigation as instructed by the local lord, you run into a strange girl named Shunya, who claims that her and Ashtor's father, who he initially thought was deceased, is still alive. Ashtor finds that to be strange as he's never met this girl before, but seeing some similarities between his father and the strange girl, he agrees to go with her to Arvashulan, a country not on any map, in an effort to find his father. I personally really enjoyed the story, it had a lot of feel-good moments, and didn't really get stale at all. It felt as if I was playing an anime to be honest. The characters also vibe incredibly well together, often playing off of each other, which can result in some very, very humorous moments. It was definitely my favorite part of the game. Have you ever started playing a game and got that instant retro feel? The gameplay of Monochrome Mobius feels like that. The gameplay mechanics absolutely feel like they belong in a game released in 2009. Combat is simple, you have regular attacks, you have techs that use MP, item, defend, and flee. The gimmick of Monochrome Mobius is it has an action ring and a zeal system. The action ring is composed of three layers and is like your ATB gauge. To get your turn, your characters need to reach the bottom of the ring. Units of the inner ring get more frequent turns than units on the outer rings. There are two main ways to make your way towards the inner rings. Either attack a staggered enemy, which is denoted by stars above their heads, or enter zeal mode and use ascend. To my knowledge, zeal mode has no other use other than enabling the use of ascend. I didn't notice any additional damage or damage reduction when under the effect of zeal. Outside of combat, the game feels like a late PS2 RPG. There is an overworld map, so running between towns isn't just point and click like a lot of RPGs these days, so that was definitely a breath of fresh air. Dungeons are few and far in between, most of the encounters take place on this world map. Speaking of which, if you're a big fan of power leveling, the game gets really easy as each character has an overworld attack. If you're a high enough level, you can entirely bypass enemies and kill them on the world map, gaining experience, money, and any possible item drops, making grinding super easy. Monochrome Mobius also employs a quest system. There are many quests in the game, and unfortunately it suffers from fetch and hunt quests. It's usually collect these items or defeat this enemy, and then return them to the quest giver for rewards. The interactions with them are super neat, however, and I feel those are worth going through the quest for. Later on in Chapter 5, you meet an NPC who gives you rewards based on how many quests you have completed. These can range from equipment, to healing items, to money and experience, in addition to whatever the quest gives you individually. Around this time, you can start to invest in shops. Throughout the game, you can get materials from combat and search points on the map. You can get these materials and donate them to shops. In doing so, it will raise the shop levels and have them offer new and better equipment. I was so happy that this is what the materials were used for. I was afraid that later on in the game they were going to introduce a crafting system. I despise crafting systems with a passion, so this made me happy. Similarly to the shop investing system, you get a cute little mascot character in Chapter 3 named Halu. Halu is a little pink plush character who can transform into a robot of death and destruction. In Chapter 5, you get the ability to augment him and teach him new abilities by feeding him materials. These abilities he can get either help him in battle with new techniques, or they can help your party by restoring their HP and MP or letting you dash for longer on the world map. Keeps the game fresh and stops it from getting quite stale. Holy colors, Batman! For a game with the title Monochrome in it, I was not expecting something like this. The game is super bright and colorful, and even better if you have HDR enabled. The game is absolutely breathtaking, the environments are huge, and they don't seem at all similar to one another. You have the standard grassy fields, but then you have deep forests, dark sewers, and expansive deserts. They look absolutely wonderful, and have more detail than I would have expected. 
The art style gives me old timey Japan vibes for sure. Definitely reminds me of 80s anime. I found it quite pleasant to look at and was not at all offensive to the eyes. Continuing with the old timey Japan theme, the music in the game feels as if it is right from that era. Lots of windpipe organs and string instruments making up every composition. Very calm and mellow music, even including in the battle system. You knew I had to mention the battle music in one aspect or another. The music is relaxing and hits perfect at every moment. Now, I know I'm going to hit a few nerves here, but I wish this game had an English dub. Unfortunately, Monochrome Mobius only features Japanese voices. Don't get me wrong, it definitely fits with the themes of the game. However, I enjoy having an English dub option. I find it much easier to get invested in in a game when there are English voices, as I feel it much easier to sense the emotion in the voices. That being said, Japanese voices don't ruin it, but one thing I really wish developers would get on with would be subtitling flavor dialogue when you only have Japanese voices as an option. By flavor text, I mean things like slogans at the end of battle, or voices you hear while running through towns. It's not the end of the world kind of situation, but I personally feel it would make the localization feel more complete. Monochrome Mobius is a relatively average length for an RPG. It took me about 50 hours to do most of the content in the game, about 90% of the quests alongside the main story. That length could have been expanded if I had explored the maps a bit more and focused more on shop and halu investing. The pacing is all over the place. You have some scenes that are short and sweet, then you have other portions that end up being like 40 minutes long. It is to be expected as the Utawari Ramono series in itself is a visual novel series. However, sometimes individual scenes are just too long you just want to get on with the slicing and dicing. Monochrome Mobius, while nothing special in the gameplay department, absolutely excels from the characters and stories. However, this being said, if you're looking for a pseudo-visual novel type RPG with a heartwarming and sweet story, definitely pick it up. Personally, I wouldn't suggest it for $60, but if you're big on anime cliché storylines, it might be worth it for you. What were your thoughts on Monochrome Mobius? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. That's the meat and potatoes, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and have a wonderful day.